if you have tools, then you have tools that belong with those tools. Those tools, tools as tools, can be stored in drawers, or maybe you've already found a good way to keep them close to where you need them the most. So let's come up with a way to keep some of those tools where we need them the most using free 3D scanning and not so free 3D printing. It has to function well, it can't damage the original tool, and of course it has to look professional as well. So stick around. I like old tools a lot, but most of them were not very ergonomic. And I like my tools, tools, where I need them and not away in a bag or a drawer somewhere. So for this video, I'll focus on one of my favorite tools, which is my old Walker Turner drill press. I just need to keep the chuck key in a way better place where I don't need to reach for it. Now some people like to use a string or fishing line and drill a hole through the key, but I think strings and fishing lines around spinning tools don't get along too well. So let's get this going. First, I'm going to scan these using Polycam. Now technically you don't need all sides of these tools, but I like to get them as complete as I can because having an entirely closed part is much easier to work with. I've already made some videos on 3D scanning using Polycam. I'll cover the main parts here, but if you want more info, check out the video link up at the top. This part looks like it's easy to scan, but it's pretty small and pretty uniform in color and somewhat shiny. And 3D scanners don't like that too much. So to make sure we get usable scans, we need to add some variation. So to remove the sheen and allow us to capture the most detail, I'm just gonna use some hairspray and that's gonna make the surface sticky and then we can just dust it with a little bit of baby powder. I also like to scan in front of a surface that's uniform in color. In this case, I'm just using a white sheet and this should help the software to distinguish the background from the key more easily. I've also propped the key up on a white plastic rod. This just helps me to get under and around more easily while I'm scanning. Normally rotating an object while scanning is not a good idea, but in this case, we're trying to only show the software the key and nothing else, so it should be able to put the pictures together to form something usable. Polycam is a paid software, but there is a way to get 3D scans for free. You can export as a GLTF format and then convert it. If you only have a few of these to do, this is a good way to start. I would also like to scan the machine in the area I'd like to mount the tool to. This is overkill because I just want to use these two existing holes on the flat surface. But if I wanted to mount this to the curved surface, for example, we could get the scan and capture the curve precisely and then use some mounting tape to attach it. The issue with a large scan like this is that it's just too large to be a closed object. The surface on this one also needed the same treatment as the last one to be a usable scan. So here are my scans and the key looks amazing. The drill press, not so much. I didn't spend nearly as much time on it, but that's okay for what I'm doing here. I just need to orient the key now for how I'd like to use it. I'd like the holder to look like it belongs to this drill press, so I'm gonna to work towards something that looks like it was a casting. It's gonna be somewhat bulky with billeted corners and some draft angles as well. Shifting over for a minute to the key, I'm gonna try printing this on the Bamboo X1 Carbon. This is just printed in PLA. I'm curious to see how accurate it is to the original. And of course, can it actually fit into the chuck and turn? As for the quality of the scan, it is excellent and the printed version reflects that. The areas that I had left a bit shiny on the chrome didn't turn out quite as well and we can see that it does work as a key. The fit into the chuck is just a little bit snug in the pin area, but that's it. For the key holder, I'll print this with Creality's Hyper PLA. In a previous video, I tested some spools of filament and this one had an incredibly small amount of variation in diameter, helping to give a super smooth print. So let's get that print going. Again, I'm going to use the Bamboo X1 Carbon for this. And this is the result. 
and I actually think it needs a little bit of an adjustment to the size. I do like it, but I think it needs to be shorter and I'd also like to accentuate the curve and maybe give it a little bit more chiseled bottom as well. Since I've just set up this K1 printer sent to me by Creality to test out, we'll see how it looks without any tuning. I'm going to add a few magnets into the prints. This will help to keep everything in place if there's any vibration, but I'd also like some satisfying click sounds when it's fully seated. Adding magnets into a print could be done with a pause, and that would be pretty neat, but instead, I'll just add some magnets in through the back and I can glue them in. Now I could mount this anywhere on the drill press with double sided tape, but I have these two holes already and I like this position a lot. So I'll just retap the holes and then I can just find some bolts to fasten it on. So let's get this mounted and see how well it works. I love it. Of course, this is just a small example I'll be using these techniques to do some of the same things for some of my other tools as well. So if you have a tool for your tool that you need to get mounted and is tough to measure, maybe this video can help you. I hope you found it entertaining or helpful or both. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you liked it and leave me a comment to let me know what you think and if you have any other ideas for future videos. You can also support me on Patreon if you'd like to help the channel grow. Take care and we'll see you on the next one.